Okay, so you said the roots for this f function. Three. Aren't the roots three and negative two? Okay, yeah. Don't fall for that, okay? Lots of students want that, the roots to be negative two as well. Roots are values of x that make the function zero, that make the output zero. Negative two does not do that, okay? Three does, okay? For the class of totes? Okay. Zero. What do you get when you plug? I like that. Zero plugged into x. What do you get when you plug zero into x? Negative three halves. Okay. Where'd you get one? Okay, and so then as we go way out to the right, large values of x positive. No, not infinity. Nope. Yeah, so we're in polynomials, we're used to it either going up or down. But now we have a new situation here. So as x gets very, very large, what is y like? It's just staring you right in the face. Gets closer and closer to one. Where's negative two coming from? Just, that's, the whole point of doing this was, here's our effective leading term. It's our effective leading term. When x gets very, very large, the function will virtually be like the leading term. And what is that? One. And so when x gets very, very large, negative, same thing. Okay. Nice job. Okay, where's Justin Rayner? You're up. Tell me about the next one. Zero? One and three. Yeah, whenever you have a root at zero, that's the origin. That will be has to be your y intercept also, right? It's got that has to be your y intercept. Okay, good. How'd you get that? Okay. X squared in the bottom. So when X gets really, really large, really large positive way out on the right, what does our function do? Gets close to three, Y value of three. And when X gets really large negative, goes to three. So that effective leading term, whatever the effective leading term does, that's what our function will do for large values of x positive and large negative values. Okay, nice, H. Uh, Adam, you're up. <coughs> Roots, H. We're gonna walk it across here, Roots. Negative one. So if we plug negative one in there, do we get zero? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll, uh, That's okay. Can we do it on the fly? So we're asking what values of x when we square it and then add one, we can get zero. No. Can't do it, right? No roots. What does it mean for our graph? The graph of h of x. Not going to cross the x-axis. Good. Now we're, now we're going to touch it. Okay, vertical asymptotes. Keep going. Positive two. Y intercept. Good.
Talk it out loud. That's right. So as x gets very large positive, what will y do? Positive. Oh. It's this. So it's every situation is different, right? So now, as x gets really, really large positive, what does that do? That's our effective leading term. Really big. That's right. And as we go way out to the left. Right. It's gonna it's so it's gonna be like way on the ends, it's gonna be like x, right? So if we zoomed way out on this, it's gonna look like the line y equals x. As x goes, it gets very, very large, y will get equally as large. And as x gets very, very large negative, y will get equally as large negative, or very, very, very close. Okay, good, next. Elizabeth, roots. X equals zero. How about vertical asymptotes? And actually, we gotta first. We have to you know how to factor this. Yeah, this is our it's a difference of squares rule. So now what are the vertical asymptotes be, Elizabeth? Two, negative two. two. Y-intercept. And what happens when we have a root at zero? Yep. OK, and what's our effective leading term? So in effect, what is the leading term of this function? How do we get the effective leading term? Jonathan Clark. How'd you get that? 5x over x squared, right? OK, so now this is kind of a new situation. What happens when x gets very, very large positive? What happens to 5 over x? Because essentially, this function will be like 5 over x when x gets really large. So well, you know what that'll do? Zero. That's right. So think about you, by making a bigger, larger and larger denominator, you're just making a smaller and smaller fraction. So it's going to get very close to 0. And as x goes to negative infinity? Yeah. Again, so it's just now really, really, really super small negative fractions getting smaller and smaller as x gets larger and larger negative. So here, our end behavior is going to be like what? It's going to approach the x-axis way out the ends. And that's any time you have the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, this is what happens. Your, your denominator gets much bigger than the numerator, and so the fraction virtually becomes 0 for large values of x. Any questions on these? You have several of these in your homework. Any questions? OK, should we graph one of these? Which one should we graph? Any requests? What's that? On this one? So tell me what value of x is going to make this 0. What value of x do you think is going to make this fraction 0? Yeah, so, well, so you can reason it different ways. You can say, oh, if I square a number, it's going to have to be 0 or greater, right? But now I'm adding 1 to it. So can I get 0? Impossible. Or you can sit here and try to solve it. x squared plus 1. I'm going to say I equals 0. x squared equals negative 1. 
It's like, uh, what? I can't get a square root that gets negative 1. See? Or I can't square a number and get negative 1. Unless you're in a different number system. Okay? In, in the real number system, there's no x that will square to negative 1. Make sense? Other questions? All right. Was there a request on which graph we should do? We're going to do a graph. Any request? Yep, I think so. Let's do k. So k is 5x over x squared minus 4. Okay, what was our roots? Let's zoom out once here. I'll zoom in. Okay, so we had a root at 0. That was also the y-intercept. And we have uh, vertical asymptote at 2. That's the worst vertical asymptote I've drawn all day. Okay, maybe this one will be better. And then negative 2, right? Is that what we said? Okay, they're supposed to be vertical. All right, so, and then we said that's, that's our only root, that's our y-intercept, and so as we go, let's start with the end behavior. As x gets very, very large positive, what did we say that this graph will be like? What will it do? Approach zero. Will it approach zero from the high side, like this, or from the low side, ne negative y-values? Positive y-values are negative for large positive x. Yeah, you just, so imagine this is, that's going to be positive. That's certainly going to be positive. So we'll be coming in, getting close to zero with positive values. Okay, so now looking back at this asymptote, remember a vertical asymptote, we can either go up to positive or down to negative infinity. What does it have to be? Why does it have to be up? There's no root here. You see, if it went down, then there would have to be a root here, and there's no root. So it's got to go up. So that's the kind of conclusions as you're making these graphs that you got to make. Okay. Same thing over here. So as x gets very large, negative, are we going to be coming y values positive towards zero or negative y values towards zero? As x is very large, negative. Looking at that. Negative because. The numerator will be negative, but the denominator will be positive. So we'll have y values getting close to zero. That's our end behavior. But all those fractions will be negative. So it'll be like that. And then, so coming into this asymptote, will it go up to positive infinity or down to negative? No roots here, right? No roots here. It's not going to cross and go back. So it's going to go down to negative infinity like this. Okay. Finally, in the middle. So what's the multiplicity on that root? So let's get the behavior on that root. What's the multiplicity? One. And that meant that it's going to go straight through. So two choices. It can go like this, or it could go like this. So the way we can figure that out is say we could plug one in. If we get a positive, then it has to go through like this. If we get a negative, it has to go through like this. So plug one in. Do so you get a negative or positive? You get negative 5 thirds. That means when it heads through, it's got to head through this way. And then to negative infinity as x approaches 2 from the left. And then as x approaches negative 2 from the right, go up to positive infinity. Questions on that? So let's check our handiwork here. Okay, so essentially we nailed it, just they have a prettier version, right? And what happens when I zoom out? So if I show you really large x values, negative and positive, and I zoom out of this, and what will that look like? That's right. So what will that look like? So 
Okay, so if I zoom out, showing you larger and larger positive and negative x values. The graph virtually just becomes zero. And that's what we said, the end behavior was zero. Okay, any questions? We're done with rational functions. That's what we're going to do for rational functions. Day and a half. So you get lots of practice in your homework, finding roots, finding vertical asymptotes, um, y-intercepts, and end behavior. And you make these kind of logical, as to, you can kind of piece the graph together with kind of logical reasoning of what it could and couldn't be. And every once in a while, if you need to check a point, like plug an x value in to see if you get a positive or a negative, that's a good thing to do. Um, but the goal is to be able to kind of get a sketch the way we've been doing it without your graphing calculator. Okay, so you're testing everything, all those things that we found, and then using that to sketch the graph without your graphing calculator. Any questions? Okay, so let's go to the exam. Your little slip. So, can I have you step out for this part? And then you'll see me at the class. You didn't do anything wrong, okay? You're, you're not in trouble. Actually, you can stay for most of it. So you can just hang at this table, and then I'll tell you when you need to leave for a moment. Okay. So uh, the results, first of all. Results are posted on Blackboard. Your score on the left side of that piece of paper that I gave you is your uh, raw score out of 37. That's how many you got right on the exam on the left side. That should be the number of periods on the right side. So those periods are every one that you got correct. If there's a number instead of the period, that was your incorrect answer. The numbers are your, so like two, you put B and you got it wrong. Four, you put D as a dog and you got it wrong. Okay? So to get your score on this exam, you're going to take that raw score times 2.5 and add 10. Okay? And when I do that, Put everyone, and that doesn't include, that has nothing to do with web work, right? Because it's just based on your raw score, so it could have nothing to do with web work, which I'll include at the end of the semester. Um, here are the results um, in the class: average 72, and then here's the distribution, which is significantly more A's and B's. So we had people move out of the C range into the A to B range, so this was an improvement. Okay, the overall average was the same, but the distribution was improved. Okay, lots more A's and B's. Um, questions about getting your score out of 100, you're calculating your score. Okay, so let's go over. So uh, module 7 starts trigonometry. Most of the rest of the course will be, will be doing trigonometry. Um, I really like the way that this course handles trig. It's different. It really focuses on meanings and understanding what this is all about instead of just kind of more symbols to move around. Okay. So I hope that you also enjoy this. And for those who have had trig before, it probably will feel a lot different. But uh, we think it's definitely beneficial for you in terms of increasing your awareness of what this is all about. Okay. So um, really, trig at, at its foundational level is about angles. Okay. So we've really got to have a good concept of angles. So let's start with that. So first of all, what is an angle? It's a, a two rays with the same endpoint called a vertex. So you've all seen this before. Two rays with a common endpoint called a vertex. That's an angle. So what does it mean for two angles to have the same measure? What does it mean for two angles to have the same measure? This is somewhat of an elusive question. So how do you 
How do you describe that? How do you describe two angles having the same measure? Taylor wants to give a shot. Um, they are. What's that? Congruent. congruent. Okay. So, all right. So congruent means kind of they have the same shape or the same physical. Uh, they're identical. They're identical physically. But what does it mean if they have the same measure, like numerical quantity? So really, we can't really answer that until we really talk about what it is about an angle that we're measuring. So let's, before we answer that question, let's take a step back and say. What is the attribute that we're trying to put a number on? So when we say we measure an angle, what attribute of the angle are we measuring? So that, that's really a question we have to ask first. What is about an angle, what attribute are we measuring? Anybody got an idea? Adam? Something to do with a circle? Okay, so he's saying, he's saying it has something to do with, what was the first word you said? The completeness of an entire circle. The completeness of an entire circle. Okay, other ideas? Uh, the distance between the two rays. The distance between the rays, how about that? So what, there's, okay, distance between the rays, this is kind of um, a good thought, but there's, a problem with it. What's the problem with distance between the rays? What's that? Oh, even okay. So just even the, to the right. So even just to the right side. Jonathan. Yeah. So it's so here close to the vertex. Look at the distance here versus the distance here. Right. As soon as you move away from the vertex, that distance is increasing. Right. The distance increases. Okay. Other thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's kind of what Adam was saying. All right, so, so you guys are talking about how you measure it. You guys are talking about how you measure it. But I'm just asking about what attribute are we measuring? What quality are we measuring of an angle when we put a number on it? And that's the unit. That's a unit. What's the attribute? What's the, what's the characteristic? So if you think about like a door, think of it like a door. One ray is the threshold. The other ray is the door, right? What is it that we're, and the door can swing, right? And so what is it that we're measuring about the angle? How far open the angle is. Yeah, so how, like how open it is between the rays, okay? How far open, that's what we're measuring, the openness. Okay, so you guys had lots of good ideas, um, but you were talking about how do we get that number. I'm asking what does the number refer to? That number is talking about Open. So if the door is closed, how, what's the openness as a number? Zero. zero, right? It's not open. It's closed completely. So it's zero. And so then as, as we open the door, we're thinking that, that or the value, the measure of the angle is going to increase, whether it's degrees or whatever unit we use. Okay, so order these. And so don't, we're not putting any numbers on it. We're just the idea of openness. I, uh, Order these from least to greatest openness. Go. Least to greatest openness. Okay, Jonathan, you're up. Where do you think it's the least open? It's going with C. What do you think? Okay. What's the most open? Where's Dustin? B is the most open. All right, so when we get to the point where we're actually putting numbers on these angle measures, this will have the lowest value, right? And then this will have the next lowest value, and this will have the greatest value, okay? In terms of measuring the openness of the angle. All right, so this is, uh, so now the next question is, how do we actually assign a value? The openness of an angle, what's the basis for measuring angles? And some of you, your suggestions were 
were pretty good. Okay, so there were some different, you talked about that earlier. And so we're going to investigate that on Wednesday. And I will um, I'm take off the Module 7 problems due Wednesday. So just the ones that were for Module 6 due Wednesday in lecture. No, I'm going to take, I'll change it. Just doing module six, not no module seven.